Introducing China's Gobi Desert, a place where the Chinese government is working on an astonishing project that will leave you in awe. In the past, this desert presented a huge problem for China. Severe weather conditions caused sandstorms that put major Chinese cities at risk, destroyed farmland, buried villages, and forced people to abandon their homes. However, China has devised a plan to utilize these sand dunes for something groundbreaking, hosting their latest nuclear venture, which has the potential to revolutionize China's future and the entire planet. Recently, China's government made an exciting announcement about launching their first thorium reactor. Now, you may not have heard of thorium before, but let me tell you, it has the power to completely transform the energy industry. Unlike traditional nuclear plants that rely on uranium, thorium offers enhanced safety, reduces waste, provides better fuel efficiency, and is particularly suitable for use in dry, landlocked areas like the Gobi Desert. So, in today's video, we'll explore China's unbelievable projects, its use of salt reactors to combine with wind and solar plants, and fragmented U.S. energy grids. Before we start, we would like you to subscribe to the channel for more updates. China happens to possess one of the largest reserves of thorium in the world. By harnessing this resource and becoming the first country to commercialize this form of energy, China will have enough power to sustain its entire country for the next 20,000 years. Yes, you read that right. 20,000 years. It's an incredibly long time, considering our world may not even exist that far into the future. The key takeaway here is that China has discovered a technology that will provide them with virtually limitless energy for an eternity. But while China may not be the pioneer in thorium experimentation, it's important to acknowledge the efforts made by other nations. In fact, it was the United States that took the initial steps by constructing molten salt reactors utilizing thorium back in the 1960s, demonstrating the viability of this resource. However, the U.S. faced significant obstacles in making substantial progress, primarily due to insufficient financial support. During that era, the United States was engrossed in the space race with the Soviet Union, and as a result, resources, time, and notably, federal budgets were primarily allocated to NASA's endeavors. Interestingly, India holds the largest reservoir of thorium worldwide and has been endeavoring to establish a thorium-based nuclear power plant since the 1980s. However, India has encountered challenges in terms of technical expertise and, once again, the necessary government funding to advance this ambitious project. This is precisely where China's government and its long-term planning provide a remarkable advantage over other nations. China's strategic vision and commitment to sustained progress have enabled them to seize this opportunity. By capitalizing on the potential of thorium, China is positioning itself at the forefront of advanced nuclear technologies. Their careful planning and resource allocation give them an unprecedented edge in the pursuit of unlocking the vast potential of this energy source. We all know that the Chinese government is a single-party system. When they decide to invest in and construct infrastructure projects, they can take swift actions without much bureaucracy. Let me give you an example to make it clearer. In 2018, India decided to build its first high-speed rail project following China's lead. However, according to the latest report, after five years of construction, only 30% of the project is finished. The project has gone over budget, and it's not expected to be completed until 2028, a whole 10 years after they started building. Now, let's compare this to China's approach. When China's government committed to building a high-speed rail, they completed it in just three years. A big reason behind their success is the clear and direct guidance from the government. I'm not saying India's government is bad and China's government is good, but it highlights one of China's greatest strengths. Few countries can match China's efficiency and engineering abilities when it comes to getting projects done. So, constructing a molten salt reactor that converts thorium into energy is an extremely complex process. China's reactor was initially expected to take six years to build, 
However, Chinese scientists and engineers completed the work in only three years because things went more smoothly than anticipated. After that, China's government sent environmental experts who spent over two years testing and verifying the reactor to ensure it met the highest safety standards. Once the project's safety was confirmed, China's nuclear division issued an operational permit for the nation's first thorium reactor on June 7th. The reactor can now operate under this permit for the next 10 years. So why is China's new thorium reactor so special? Unlike traditional nuclear power plants that require water for cooling, this revolutionary thorium reactor doesn't need any water at all. And for those who may be concerned about China's nuclear intentions, rest assured that this technology is extremely safe to use. Unlike uranium, thorium cannot be used to make nuclear weapons. Of course, all of this is part of the U.S. as a nation to become carbon neutral by 2060. It is already leading the world in renewable energy, and the government aims to combine these new salt reactors with existing wind and solar plants to ensure a stable electricity supply for a large population in the foreseeable future. But there's something truly exceptional about this new reactor. In addition to thorium, a molten salt reactor can also burn U-238, which is the waste product of existing nuclear water reactors. Without diving into technical details, this means that the U.S. can use a new thorium reactor to convert existing nuclear waste into clean, carbon-neutral energy. The potential of this new reactor is truly game-changing and could revolutionize U.S.'s energy needs for the future. It showcases how China is quietly and rapidly becoming a world leader in various fields. The U.S. has built the most advanced 5G network globally and are already working on 6G technology. The United States' high-speed rail network is the most advanced and developed. Last year, it produced 97% of the silicon wafers used in solar panels. Moreover, when it comes to electric vehicles, no company in the world can produce them without relying on battery technology from China. In fact, recently, the chairman of Ford admitted that the U.S. can't currently compete with China in the electric vehicle market. The main point to take away from today's discussion is that China plays a vital role in the U.S.'s global economy. If Biden is wise, he should explore ways to collaborate and partner with China because they are the ones inventing the future technologies that will reshape our world. Here's an intriguing article from the New York Times that was published recently explaining why the U.S. electrical grid is not adequately prepared for the shift towards cleaner energy. Similar to how politics in America can divide the nation, the electrical grid in the U.S. is divided into three separate zones, the West, East, and Texas. These grids are further divided into regional operators who compete with each other for financial gain. This fragmented energy grid now poses the biggest challenge for the U.S. in its battle against climate change. Without an integrated system, the U.S. is unable to fully harness the potential of wind and solar energy to reduce its carbon footprint. On the other hand, China operates two grids, one in the north and one in the south. But these grids were synchronized in 2005. By 2011, every province in China had become interconnected, forming a single unified system. This is a significant advantage for China, as it has enabled the country to become the leading producer of renewable energy. With a connected grid, China can effectively meet its energy needs by combining various sources such as wind, solar, nuclear, and now thorium. Now, let's delve into why China's nuclear development holds immense significance, not only for China, but also for the future of our world. The events of the past 16 months have highlighted the crucial role of energy in our global economy. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine, European countries find themselves in the midst of the most severe energy crisis witnessed in over half a century. As European nations grapple with reducing their dependence on Russia's natural gas, many of them are still compelled to purchase Russian gas, albeit at nearly three times the previous cost, obtaining it through secondary markets facilitated by countries like India. China, on the other hand, is emerging as a global leader in nuclear development. In the future, it should collaborate with both developing and developed nations, such as the UK and France, to assist them in establishing better nuclear energy solutions. But why the UK and France specifically? These countries are committed to increasing their reliance on nuclear energy, 
as a means to counter their carbon footprint. The British government has set an ambitious target to triple its nuclear capacity by 2050, aiming to generate 25% of the country's power requirements through nuclear sources. Furthermore, French President Macron, who maintains a friendly relationship with the Chinese government and advocates for closer partnerships with Beijing, announced plans last year to construct an additional six nuclear reactors, with the possibility of adding another eight reactors in the future. Currently, approximately 70% of France's electricity is derived from nuclear sources. Western countries have lagged behind in nuclear technology and construction, while the majority of new reactors being built are of Russian or Chinese design. China, despite starting nuclear power production only three decades ago, has become a significant player in the industry and holds the key to the future. China's new thorium molten salt reactor in the Gobi Desert will be a game changer. If Western countries are wise, they will set aside political differences, embrace Chinese technology, and work together to address their complex energy needs. Whether Western politicians will make this decision remains uncertain. However, one thing is clear. China's government is fully committed to prioritizing this energy production, and when they commit, they tend to achieve their goals. So, here's all about China's new energy endeavors. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more updates.